So this video is brought to you by Ewok Lego with the wrong arm. I haven't had the time to fix it. So first, we're just going to make sure you know how to use your calculator to evaluate um, evaluate inverse trig functions. So um, I'll start with the TI-84, the old school calculator. Um, what you need to make sure first is that you're in radians or degrees. Now recall that, um, well, I, it doesn't matter in this case. So I'm going to go under mode, note I'm in degrees. I'm going to go ahead and change it to radians. And then second tan gives me tan inverse of 158 equals 1.56 radians. Now recall, we don't need to write units on these things when they're radians. It's assumed radians if there are no units provided. Let me switch back and do this in degrees. Um, depending upon the t problem you're working, you may want radians or degrees. So here's 158. Oops. And there it is in degrees. Now, you could also have just converted these radians in degrees if you wanted to, either way. I'm going to show you the same method with Desmos. So we're doing sine inverse of negative 0.6199. Let me switch to Desmos. In the little keyboard thing here under functions, here's all of the inverse functions. And what's kind of nice about Desmos is it has arc, cosecant, secant, and cotangent, unlike the calculator. So I wanted sine inverse of negative 0.6199. One nine nine. What do you guess? Is that degrees or radians? Good guess. That is radians. So we'll say this is approximately equal to negative zero point six six nine. Or so. Let me show you. When you hit this wrench button, here you will see whether you're in radians or degrees. So now I've changed it to degrees. It automatically changes our value into degrees, and that's negative thirty eight point. Uh, 309. I'll do the last one here, arc cosine under functions, cosine, and we're going to do negative 0 0.9810. So there's our degrees, 168.813. Don't ask me why I chose three decimal places. It was more or less random. I'll change it back to uh, radians. We've got two point. Nine four six. So you should be able to do this either in Desmos or your calculator. I think those of you on Allison's class and Eric's class were fan, big fans of Desmos. So Desmos it up, friends. Um, so I need to go back and note I made a mistake in all of these. These are all currently the way they're written should be understood as radians, even though we know they were supposed to be degrees. So I forgot to put the degree symbol in there. You got to have that in there when you're when you're talking about degrees. All right, so this is a nice, did you know that uh, recapitulation is the full word of recap? Yeah, you did, because that's previous in the notes. So here's a recap of the domain and range of the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent functions. So uh, let me write the functions in here, because this is how we spell them if we were to write them out. So cosine x. Um, h of x equals tangent x, and then this is cosecant of x, secant of x, and cotangent of x. So what's going to happen is we are going to restrict all of these domains to a particular uh, set of values so that when we take the inverse of these, we actually get an inverse function, as we've done here. So what, remember what happens when you take an inverse, you switch the domain and range. That's way back in chapter five. So that means we can real quickly just write all these values down. These are going to be the domains of all of the arc functions or the inverse functions. So this is going to be all y values belonging to negative 1 to 1. This is going to be all y values that belong to negative 1 to 1. Fail, fail, fail on my part. Um, these are now considered inputs, so we're calling these x values. They were the y values from our original function. Now that we're doing the inverse, they, be, they become x values. Arctangent is all real numbers for its inputs. 
our cosecant is all numbers except for the values in between negative 1 and 1. And then our secant, same thing. And then our cotangent, or cotangent inverse, all our values. Okay, so now we got to do the difficult task of identifying what's the range, meaning how did we restrict these domains to get these um, inverse functions? So we know the first three. We've restricted sine to be from negative pi halves to pi halves inclusively. And then cosine, we restricted it to be zero to pi inclusively. And our tangent, we, we restricted it to negative pi halves to pi halves, uh, not inclusively because the values on those at these points are undefined, they're asymptotes there. So the question is, what are we gonna do with arc cosecant, which is one over sine? Well, it feels like we're gonna restrict it from negative pi halves to pi halves. The problem is um, there are asymptotes in arc um, cosecant. So let's go to Desmos real quick and let's graph um, sine x. And then let's graph cosecant of x. And let's note, where are those asymptotes? So it's wherever sine is zero. So we've got the one at x equals zero, there's an asymptote. And we've got the one at x equals, is it pi halves? No, um, it is zero again at pi. So we can't allow these values to happen. Oh, also at x equals negative pi. Well, think about how we restricted uh, sine to get its inverse. We said, let's restrict it from pi halves, negative pi halves here to here. So there's one value in between there that is not allowed in our cosecant, because we're gonna use that same restriction and we'll get um, the same possible outputs. So we're gonna copy sine's um, restricted domain for the range of our cosecant, and we're gonna exclude this one value in that. Let me show you how that pans out. So we're going to say that the possible outputs for arc cosecant is all values from negative pi halves up to zero, not including zero, and then from zero to pi halves. Again, not including zero. That's how we exclude that single value. Okay, so that's um, how we generate the, um, the restriction on cosecant. Let's look at it on secant. So that means we need to change our function to cosine and our other function to be secant. And recall that we did for this value, we went from zero to pi. And that got us as a, all in decreasing everywhere. And we gotta find what's this one excluded value here? Well, that looks like uh, when cosine is zero, which I think is pi halves. If you look at the unit circle, it most definitely is. So that becomes the one restriction on our, the domain of arc secant in order to get the appropriate range for arc secant. So we're excluding this one value. And there is the domain for arc secant. And then our cotangent um, <laughs> we just have to look at what, what was the, um, now well, let's look at the graph again. So let me just clear out this one, get a new blank graph, and we're going to graph f of x equals cotangent of x. All right. So if you look at this thing, um, it's got an asymptote at x equals zero. And it's got an asymptote at x equals pi. So if you look at the piece that we've grabbed here, this is decreasing everywhere from 0 to pi. So that's a one-to-one -one slice of the cotangent function. We could have uh, just as easily done this from uh, negative pi up to 0 and had the same thing. Um, this is more or less an arbitrary choice. So that's what our, our um, domain, we're going to restrict our domain to be these, uh, this interval of x values, and we'll pick up all possible values for arc 
cotangent. So not inclusive from zero up to pi. And the reason we don't include either of those bounds on the interval is because they are both asymptotes in the cotangent function. And there you have it. That's the domain and range of all of the inverse functions.